Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is my great pleasure to present our eight-month progress into our research agenda, which is focused on the risk assessment in gastroenterology. My name is Jakub Oferica. I'm a physician. I'm coming from Slovakia, and I came here to pursue my vision, which is to promote evidence-based approach in uh, gastroenterology, and I would like to do so by better understanding risk in this field. For this purpose, we choose these two specific goals. First one is a focus on the relationship between acute pancreatitis and chronic liver disease. And second one is uh, about application of fecal microbiome transplantation in patients with uh, alcoholic hepatitis. So first project has a form of meta-analysis, and we are focusing on the effect of chronic liver diseases on outcome in acute pancreatitis. Chronic liver disease is one of the most common comorbidity in general population, reaching 20%. Uh, also, this disease is uh, associated with several conditions and comorbidities like hyperinflammation, gut liver axis disturbances, susceptibility to infections, predisposing these patients for worst outcome. Uh, also, this disease uh, shares several risk factors with acute pancreatitis, predisposing for concurrence, as you can see on the figure. Uh, but the exact nature of the relationship between these two diseases is unknown, and that's something we want to investigate in this meta-analysis. For this purpose, we postulated this question, how does the presence of chronic liver disease influence the outcome in acute pancreatitis? Our populations are all the patients with acute pancreatitis. We are comparing the patients with and without chronic liver disease. Primary outcome is the mortality. And our hypothesis is that indeed chronic liver disease uh, increase the mortality in these patients. And by this project, we would like to identify a novel risk factor in AP patients. So for this purpose, we conducted a systematic search in last year, November. We identified 37 articles that were included in this project. And here we come to the most interesting part of this presentation, the results. What you can see here is the depiction of in-hospital mortality in forest spot is expressed in relative terms. So we are comparing the patients with chronic liver disease to those without chronic liver disease, and it's measured in odds ratios. The populations causes of patients with cirrhosis and steatotic liver diseases, as you can see the two distinguished subgroups. And steatotic liver disease also include patients with uh, diseases like alcoholic liver disease and metabolic associated liver disease and entire spectrum in between uh, these diseases when there is overlap. Uh, and what you can see, the pool odds ratio for all the patients were 2.57 times higher uh, in patients with chronic liver disease group compared to, to those who didn't have a, this, uh, this uh, comorbidity, reaching clinical and mathematical uh, significance, meaning that patients with acute pancreatitis and chronic liver disease in, are in much higher risk of dying during the hospitalizations. So the next question is, of course, how? So what you can see here is our second forest plot depicting the pool odds ratio for overall uh, organ failure in the same population. And what you can see that these patients have once again 2.59 times higher odds of developing organ failure, uh, which means that these patients by definition have higher odds for more severe disease and uh, as, as the organ failure is associated with higher mortality also for the mortality. So what is the probable cause of this? <coughs> what you can see here is the odds for SIRS, as several authors suggest that actually the hyperinflammation uh, in the patients with, with chronic liver disease is a possible driver of, of uh, worse outcome. And how, what we can see in our population that patients with uh, AP uh, uh, and chronic liver disease had two times uh, higher odds of developing uh, SIRS. That is one of the plausible uh, met, uh, uh, factors that, that, that causing this higher mortality in these patients. So uh, regarding the strength of our uh, study, this is the first meta focus on the population of overall chronic liver diseases in AP patients. We have large sample size and diverse population, which of course then led to higher heterogeneity. 
Uh, and also the other limitations of our study is that we have a limited number of prospective studies and basically no data on uh, rare causes of CLD and viral hepatitis. In conclusion, uh, the mortality is significantly higher in patients with AP and CLD. Uh, they suffer for high, with higher uh, odds of severe cause of disease, systemic and local complication. <coughs> Regarding the implication for practice, these patients need uh, more attention, especially during the early phases of the disease and during the stratification of the risk and more intensive monitoring during the disease. Uh, an implication for research is such that we need much more prospective data, especially focus on role of infection in these patients, as some studies suggesting that this is another important thing to focus on, and also of specific therapeutic approaches such as albumin supplementation or early or prophylactic antibiotics in these individuals. And also the CLD could be used in novel prognostic models in patients with AP. The current status of this project is that it is submitted in UEG journal and is under revision. So briefly let me speak a few sentences about my second project, which is focused on the application of fecal microbiota transplantations with patients with alcohol-related liver diseases. Uh, so RLD uh, uh, afflict 4.8% of global population. Out of those patients, approximately 10 to 35 percent will develop uh, inflammation in the liver, uh, so-called uh, alcoholic hepatitis. And in a severe form of this disease, we're speaking about distinguished uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, disease, burden with high mortality, as high as 26 percent in. Uh, short term and 44% in long term, meaning uh, 180 days. We are very limited in current knowledge regarding the treatment of this disease. Basically, what we have is just nutrition, nutritional support, and glucocorticoids. And glucocorticoids have uh, several limitations, uh, especially the many contraindications, and also the effect is seen only in the short term, and the effect size is very small. So we are in desperate need of novel treatment. Several authors suggest that actually the primary physiological, pathophysiological mechanism of severe alcoholic hepatitis is disturbances in gut liver axis. And the influencing of this IC bus by fecal microbiome transplantation could be a novel treatment for these patients. Uh, however, uh, not conclusive evidence is rich uh, at this point in literature. For this purpose, we created this uh, clinical question. Does fecal microbiome transplantation improve survival in alcohol-related liver disease? Our populations are all patients with alcoholic-related liver disease, uh, and we are inter interested in the intervention of fecal microbial transplantation, either oral or uh, colonoscopic or, or, or all types. And we are comparing to standard of care, and mostly we are interested in survival in long and short term. And our hypothesis is that fecal microbiome transplantation is uh, an effective treatment for these patients, and we would like to identify it as a novel options for these patients. We conducted a systematic search. In this November, we identified 13 articles. Uh, and right now, we are proceeding with data extraction with my co-investigator uh, and planning the meeting with statisticians. So, in overview, uh, the first project is currently under review, second one uh, is progressing, and we are waiting for the meeting with statisticians. So, and at the end, thank you for your attention, and I wish you great many mistakes as well. So uh, what do you think, when can we implement the uh, FMT to the therapeutic uh, flowchart of a patient with, uh, with alcoholic liver disease? When, when is the time point to do that? That's something that we also would like to uh, provide answer to. There are several options. Usually we want to do it immediately after the diagnosis, uh, during the acute phase. Uh, in acute phase, you mean an alcoholic hepatitis? Yes, in 
case of severe acute alcoholic hepatitis, yes. Thank you, Jakub. A great presentation. So I have two questions regarding your first project. Uh, the first one is I saw for multiple outcomes you actually had studies that were pointing in the opposite direction. So have you checked at all why that might be? Have they done anything differently? Yes, we didn't find any uh, plausible reason that could explain it, but as you can see that there was very broad uh, confidence interval and usually there were, there were low uh, events rate. So we think that this is the main reason for, for, for the effect. It wasn't possible to investigate any population factors or anything like that? Uh, as far as we checked the differences in population and, and other factors, we didn't find any reason that could explain this, this opposite effect. Mm -hmm. My second question is, were you able to subgroup based on the type of liver disease in every outcome? Nope, nope. Uh, only for the outcomes we got the most results and the only possible subgroups were just cirrhosis and steatotic liver disease. We couldn't do specific subgroup regarding the type of steatotic liver disease because of the lack of data. And do you think that's an issue or do you think it's okay? I would love to see the results for subgroups, uh, but uh, let's see what reviewers will say. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Thank you.